So, you want to know why the taxi industry is failing? You want to know how a method of transportation that's held it down for damn near a century is getting dog walked by rideshare apps? How Uber and Lyft seem to be taking over and upsetting the balance? Come with me and you'll see the true answer, which is... <sighs> taxi drivers are just absolute dicks. Just the biggest dicks, like the fattest of cocks. Let me explain. I don't know what's more ironic, the fact that I'm in Orlando filming this, or that I'm in Orlando in my old high school bedroom filming this. No script or anything like that, this is just me rambling on a series I've been wanting to start called Janky Job Journals. Taxi Cab Confessions. A few years ago here in Orlando, before I moved to Dallas, I was a dispatcher at a taxi company. The job was great, hours weren't terrible, overtime was alright, pay was decent for what it was. I say all these things pre-pandemic. I will say though, the worst thing about being a dispatcher at a taxi company to god dang taxi drivers. Bruh, I don't think y'all understand what it is like to have an entire job, company, or business infrastructure built around helping people who just continuously shoot themselves in the foot. Not even shoot themselves in the foot. A, a group of people who, in a workforce, daily, if not every, every hour, every call, every 30 seconds, shoot themselves in the foot and then proceed to individually follow it by blowing off all 10 toes individually. If you want examples, I have plenty. When I was about maybe six months onto the job, a good friend of mine told me I should maybe catalog one crazy call a day just so I have it on record and maybe I could tell a story about it. When I tell you I started doing that and I have plenty. Like each line you see here is one individual crazy instance I had on that job. Each one of them different, no two are the same. Each incident, a different driver. If this video does well, maybe I will start telling some of them. So if you've ever had a bad taxi experience and you wanted to call and complain to the company, I'm here to tell you, be mad at the drivers, not the dispatchers. Your problem are with these people, not these people. These people, not these people. Three times so it sticks to your subconscious mind. These people, not them. But yeah, when an unfortunate side effect of your job is getting chewed out on behalf of an entire group of people that the people who are angry at them have no access to, gets a little frustrating. The most basic example, you and your family call for a cab. Y'all been waiting for like what? 30 minutes to an hour, but you see other cabs from the same company you called coming in the area, not coming to get you. Then you call us. Hey bro, it's been like 40 minutes, where my cab at? And as a dispatcher, only thing I can tell you is, I'm sorry sir, we're still working on getting someone to service that call at the moment. We'll try to get with you momentarily. And then as soon as I'm off that call, oh you drivers are some bum ass niggas. See what I mean? Biggest problem with that, why am I still wearing my headset? Anyhow, yeah, when you're a taxi driver, there's this term that applies to you called being an independent contractor. Meaning they rent the car from that specific company, but they are allowed to do with the car whatever they please. The reason you and your family can't get picked up and you're seeing other drivers in the area who aren't coming to get you, because on the tablets, laptops, phone, apps, whatever it is they use to check local fares in the area, Every driver within a certain radius saw your call waiting, knew you and your family or whoever were needing a pickup, and collectively from multiple locations all said, Fuck that, I ain't doing it. Pass. Uh, I'm good. Man, hell no. Again, independent contractor, so there's absolutely nothing that can be done about it. And then you know who gets called and cussed out on their behalf? Dispatchers. And at the end of the day, that call is probably doing nothing except getting in the way of other calls that are trying to get through so that they can place an order to maybe or maybe not get picked up. Crazy part is we live in this new little techno babble era so all the drivers, at least at my job, have some way of being alerted as to who needs getting picked up in the area. So we would send a message to the entire fleet, meaning everyone who's driving a cab that night or driving a cab in that specific area, hey, this many people, this party name, needing a pickup, in this area and then when they respond to us with silence and no one picks up the job after 20 minutes that is basically them telling us and the customers equal parts of fuck off see what i mean like business practices and principles are kind of lost on these people and then these will be the same drivers who call it and complain to us that a group of ubers or lyfts came in and swept all their fares at a certain area now don't get me wrong there's maybe one good driver for like every 50 thousand and nine times out of ten the good ones usually build their own reputation in the areas they serve that when people see them they at least know they're gonna get taken care of. Or they might have customers who come and ask for them regularly. Like I remember a time one of our drivers called in almost getting into a fist fight with another company's driver because he didn't like him being in his area. And in this potential scuffle that never escalating past the shouting match, managed to scare off all of their customers who all then just went and took over. And I know you're probably thinking that none of the stuff I'm describing sounds logical. It's not, but we live in an era where sense ain't so common these days. Even basic things like human decency and common courtesy is lost on these people. 
Another example, if you're in any kind of independent business or even just like reselling online like I do, a good lead can go a long way. Like, I live on the outskirts of Dallas, which is a major shipping facility. If something that was supposed to be online order only ends up on a shelf out where I live, my city is basically where abandoned orders go to die. So if it's been on the shelf for a week, I know its value, and no one's coming to pick it up, free game. So I'll find it, flip it, I made a quick buck, customers happy because they finally got their hands on something they couldn't in the first place, everybody wins. Here's how that situation plays out in the world of taxi. And actually, if you got kicked off a boat in Miami right around two years ago when the pandemic started, you are probably involved in the story I'm about to tell. Parents and grandparents going to Miami, going on a cruise, which happened right around the time the pandemic started and people weren't too serious about it at the time. And then apparently the city of Miami brought the cruise to a screeching halt before it could leave the docks. Why they couldn't make this grand decision before people boarded the boat, unloaded, and were in the middle of having their first day party, I don't know. Like, if you bought plane tickets and flew in from overseas for that, I know you had to be pissed. So, mid-celebration, everybody has to get out of the pool, go back to their room, stop gambling, stop drinking, whatever it is they were doing, get back to the rooms, pack up all this stuff, get off the ship. No one, including the crew, was ready to deboard an entire ship only 30 minutes after boarding it full of people. And if you've ever been on a boat, you know. You have to park your car usually at a lot that they have reserved somewhere about a mile or two out from where the boat actually is. They then shuttle you and your luggage to where the boat docks. You load up and that's how you get on. But you're supposed to go in little groups of people at a time, not the entire boat. And then someone tipped off the taxis. Let this be a note that taxi drivers are absolute dicks in Orlando and Miami. Maybe all of Florida. So what did these freshly pandemic panicked people see when they get off the boat? Shuttles ready to take them back to their cars? Nope, a sea of taxi drivers just going down an entire strip of road. Now, logic in this sense says a cruise ship holds a couple thousand people. There's at least a couple hundred cars that are needing people with a way to get back to them. So even though the ride to the lot is only like a mile or two and it's only a short fare, doing that a few dozen times, plus whatever tips you get, would make for a good day. Yeah, that's not what happened. Remember what I said about a lack of human decency and common courtesy? Bruh, every single one of them. For the record, I don't know what mileage is like in every state, city, whatever, but if you're going only a mile or two out and it's anything above 10 bucks, you're getting ripped off. So of course every driver that was a part of this fathead flock in Miami was charging at least 10, 15, 20, some even 50 bucks to fill their car with as many people as possible and take them down the road. No, they were not negotiating. No, they were not being nice about it. No, they were not even offering to help people get their luggage into the car. Just an entire sea of scumbags overcharging for what is a short ride when really they could have just done that short ride multiple times and made a killing that day. And probably the most disrespectful thing I heard about this entire incident, some taxi drivers drive vans because there are large families with lots of luggage, or there are people getting on boats, going on cruises, going to theme parks, who have those little rascal scooters, whether you're medically in need of it, or you're old and can't get around like that, there are many reasons for needing one of those. These mother f***ers. We're basically telling everybody who's in that scenario, eh, I'll tell you what, if you can lift the scooter and put it in my cab, I'll take you. Nigga. So to them, just fuck all medical reasons and bad backs that probably has you in that scooter in the first place. Potentially hurt yourself by lifting it and putting it into my cab, which I'm not even gonna offer to do for you to make a decent amount of money. If you can do that, I'll take you down the street about what, 900 yards? And of course, because they all had self-respect, none of the customers took a cab that day. The entire cruise ship called an Uber. You know what the worst part about it is? Those taxi drivers all probably were offended that no one took their cabs, went home, and think they did nothing wrong that day. Am I making my point here? And that entire fleet of cabs probably came from a variety or various number of companies. And you know who definitely got called, cussed out, and shit on for their shady behavior? The dispatchers. Yeah, I don't know what this is gonna look like when I finally chop it all down, but quick rant, hopefully. Yeah, I don't like doing call to actions on a video because I, I really don't know a good way how. But if you like this video, leave a like, share it, or if you have your own terrible experience with a taxi driver or a company that you'd like to share, please comment down below. And if this video does well, I will maybe share some of my other wacky experiences I went through while working there. But that's it for me. Y'all enjoy your week. All I'm offering is the truth. baby. Hey there, back home, putting this in post in the same outfit I was wearing in Florida. God, I gotta get a new wardrobe. Anywho, this video is long enough already, so I figured I might as well just slap this on the end. First things first, if you've made it this far, thank you. Secondly, I'm gonna be at DreamCon in a few weeks. I'm not featured, by the way, I'm just, just gonna be there. But if you're one of the few people watching that'll also be in town for the event, feel free to walk up to me, say hey, what's up, shake a hand, grab a picture, whatever. I will be there the entire weekend. I'm mostly just there to connect with all my bigger friends from around the internet since they'll all be in one place for a weekend. While I'm there, I'm probably going to try to film a few skits with friends, jump in a couple of vlogs, I'm supposed to be doing a podcast, and then a few other things on the side, but 
we'll see how that works out because you know how planning with our people goes. But yeah, if you're in town that weekend, I will see you at the place where dreamers do what they do.